don't even know. There, there was this really weird, weird word that was like, like that. Separately, there will be a lot of different origins, and the etymology will be really varied, considering the different languages. So I guess it's just more about finding places where you could practice the and actually like apply these etymologies to the words, and how uh, the differentiation between all the, uh, the the parts of speech could help. Yeah. So. Um, and also, words of Asian origin tend to be spelled almost exactly how they sound. Um, and sometimes uh, what happens, what I've noticed, right, especially when you get the Indian or mm -hmm, Indian mm -hmm, words, mm -hmm. the way we pronounce it is so different from the way yeah. it's pronounced there. And I'm like, no, that's not spelled like that. I would have stand up exactly. and say that's not. Like, Dari will be spelled, it's pronounced Dari, but it's really spelled something totally different there. So for us, for us, it's more of taking a back seat because I think yeah. it's you guys are pronouncing it the way it actually, yeah. you know, yeah. so... Yeah. Then you remember in the county spelling bee, you were asked a uh, Indian word, right? It's a very common word, and then you couldn't. Do you remember that word? No. No. no I, I've oh. seen. I've seen that our kids really <laughs> yeah. kind of uh, struggle with those uh, Indian, uh, Indian yeah. words because you know at home they probably pronounce yeah, it differently, differently and, uh, and when they go there, like, it's one different. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. 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 it's like it's a th, but it's actually it's not. No, but they but then it's pronounced as body, so you know it's basma. Basmati, so you know it's like yeah, that's the mandir is another one. Mandir, 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 you know. So it's uh, the DH. Yeah. So those words will come, you know, because I think we're all uh, they may come. Oh, also watch out for German. German is very interesting. Yeah. So what's yeah. it with the German? Uh, yeah. you hear I like and F sounds like V or something like that. Oh, okay. So basically, um, Ws are pronounced like Vs. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. B's are pronounced like F's. Oh. Uh, so technically, like you know the uh, Volkswagen, which should, wagon yeah, should be pronounced like Volkswagen or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it, it ends up being interesting. But Can I give more example on that German thing? Just to oh, take a small also, word. Also, um, another thing with German is that like it follows um, the compound words thing that English does. So if you have a word like. I can't think of any compound words off the top of my mind. It's weird. Uh, like lighthouse. Yeah, there we go. Um, German does that too. Like you'll have uh, Zeitgeist. Zeit is German for time, I believe, and Geist is like ghost, so it's the spirit of the time. Um, so th things like that. But um, so I the guess the other word is poltergeist too, right? Poltergeist, yeah. yeah similar to ghost. Same, I don't yeah. know what polter is. Like yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, so you want to, uh, it's, it's just getting used to the words, like, the reason I know, I know that it's because looking at German words over and over again, you tend to, like, uh, see the patterns between, um, the, the roots and the, the definitions. Like, if asking for the definition of zeitgeist, I'd be able to piece together the roots. Right. Right. Um, so also, if you do get a long word, split it up, like, Bildungsroman, don't try to, like, do try to um, split it up into you know manageable chunks. Um, that'll help you. Then go over the syllables. Anything mm -hmm. that help will, that will help break the word down. And I mean, and like Sherlyn already said this before, but it's your best bet to like spell it the way it sounds. It's you feel like it's the best option. Yeah. If you can figure out you know uh, what's going on 